with Nancy Pelosi on House Bill Amendment. An amendment by Rep. Vicki Hartzler, Armo, to the $696 billion National Defense Authorization Act blocking the U.S. military from paying for gender reassignment surgery or hormone therapy for service members and their families was defeated on Thursday by a vote of 209 to 214. Twenty-four Republicans crossed the aisle to defeat the amendment leaving the Pentagon free to pay for gender reassignment surgeries for service members and their families. Those Republicans include Reps. Justin Amash, Mike Kaufman, Barbara Comstock, Daryl Issa and Frank Lobiondo. The Missouri Republican believed her amendment was narrowly tailored to prevent tax dollars from paying for gender transition surgeries. Hartzler proposed the politically charged amendment saying the Pentagon should not be paying for costly surgeries when it's struggling with tight budgets and readiness problems. There are many problems. But funding transition surgeries with tax dollars is problematic because the surgery is very costly. Surgical recovery time decreases the deployability of our soldiers, and funding transition surgeries means diverting money from other defense priorities. Democrats argued the amendment was discriminatory in nature. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, DECA, argued against Hartzler's amendment saying, Make no mistake. The effect and the intent of this unjust and mean-spirited amendment is to ban patriotic Americans from serving our country. They are fighting to rip away the health care of thousands of brave service members, according to CNN. Marine veteran and California Republican Rep. Duncan Hunter who supported Hartzler's amendment argued, the amendment wasn't preventing transgender people from serving, but said any gender transition should happen before someone enlists. You're joining the U.S. military. Choose what gender you are before you serve. Warn panics over Kid Rock Senate run. Sends out emergency warning email. The media may be looking somewhat skeptically at Kid Rock's potential run for a Senate seat in Michigan, but Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts isn't. In a panicked email to supporters. Everyone's favorite Native American appropriator sent out a warning that the musician could end up winning the seat now occupied by Democrat Senator Debbie Stabenow. Earlier this week, the Daily Caller reported, the 46-year-old Mr. Rock, real name Robert James Ritchie, confirmed that he was going to challenge for the Republican nomination in the 2018 Senate election in his home state of Michigan, amid press rumors that it was a hoax to promote a new album. Once again the press is wrong, he wrote on his blog. First of all, I've got 15 days from my announcement to file paperwork with the FEC. Second, I'm not signed to Warner Brothers which simple fact-checking would have revealed. No plans for an album or anything else that has been the usual norm in the music business or politics. And Senator Stabenow and I do share a love of music, although probably not the same kind, he continued. I can see it she is better at playing politics than I am so I'll keep doing what I do best, which is being a voice for tax-paying, hard-working Americans and letting politicians like her know that we the people are sick and tired of their bulls. This put Pocahontas hot on the warpath. I know a lot of people are thinking, this is some sort of joke, right? Warren wrote in an email smugly titled Senator Kid Rock, are me, according to the Boston Herald. Well. She said, maybe this is all a joke, but we all thought Donald Trump was joking when he wrote down the escalator at Trump Tower and announced his campaign, too. And sure, maybe this is just a marketing gimmick for a new album or tour, but we all thought Donald Trump was just promoting his reality TV show, too. The email then linked to a page where users could give a split donation to Stabano and Warren, Lee Watha has her own 2018 campaign to run as well, although that's likely not going to be as contentious as Stabenos. Of course, here's the rub, the only people who consider Donald Trump's run a joke are the same choir that Warren continues to preach to. Insulated from the political mainstream, liberals like Warren seem to neglect the fact that America is sick of career politicians, and consider outsiders who try to run for political office a joke. The joke was on them in 2016. Will it be in 2018? With this kind of nonsense, they shouldn't be so smug. Please like and share on Facebook and Twitter if you agree Kid Rock should strike fear into the hearts of the left.
What are your thoughts on Kid Rock's Senate run? Scroll down to comment. Twitter blows up in Lib's faces as bring back Obama trend floods the internet. Liberal sycophants of former President Barack Obama flooded Twitter with a silly hashtag hash bring back Obama this Wednesday in a desperate attempt to return America to what were in many people's eyes the worst eight years in the nation's lengthy history. Miss them so much. Hash bring back Obama hash thank you Obama cried one liberal. My hash Wednesday wisdom comes from Pres Obama. He's a leader who wanted to unite us as a nation and we should never expect less hash bring back Obama, whined another, this one apparently completely detached from reality. The fact is that Barack Hussein Obama divided the nation like never before by trying to turn natives against immigrants, Christians against Muslims, whites against blacks and so on. Using lies and actual alternative facts, the former president convinced roughly 50% of Americans, the Democrat ones, that is, that it's bigoted to stand against illegal immigration, Islamophobic to stand against Islamic terrorism, racist to stand up for the police and homophobic to stand up for religious liberty. Moreover, he championed class warfare at every opportunity, misleading the poor and impoverished into believing that the fault for their alleged suffering resided with the wealthy, that is those who create jobs and actually keep the economy running. He was a deceiver and a con artist. And the facts prove it, not that his worshippers will ever acknowledge these realities, but that doesn't mean conservatives can't try. Observe the responses these Obama groupies received, dovetailing to how Obama divided the nation, even CNN admitted last year that race relations had worsened greatly under his tutelage. A majority of Americans say relations between blacks and whites in the U.S. have worsened under President Barack Obama, according to a new CNN. ORC poll, the network reported in October of 2016. Overall, 54% say relations between blacks and whites have gotten worse since Obama became president, including 57% of whites and 40% of blacks. If even one of the most liberal media networks in existence was willing to be honest about the former president's divisiveness, what does it say about those of his groupies who continue to champion him as some sort of hero? It says that either they're either completely ignorant, or they've been brainwashed beyond repair. Sad. H. T. Sarah Palin, please share this story on Facebook and Twitter and let us know what you think about the disturbing way in which liberals continue to proudly prop up Obama's failed legacy. What do you think about the way liberals seem to worship Obama? Scroll down to comment below. Blacked out Humadocs released, but one key part didn't get erased. Just because former Secretary of State and failed Democrat presidential candidate Hillary Clinton didn't win the 2016 election, that doesn't mean that all of the scandalous activity that surrounded her and her closest associates will just go away or disappear. Judicial Watch announced in a news release Friday that it had just published newly found documents from the non governmental email account used by Huma Abn. Deputy Chief of Staff and all-around right hand to Clinton before, during and after her stint at the State Department. Some 448 pages of heavily redacted government documents and email chains were obtained by Judicial Watch as part of the continuation of a 2015 lawsuit filed against the State Department by the conservative watchdog group that demanded all emails of official State Department business received or sent by former Deputy Chief of Staff Huma Abden from January 1, 2009 through February 1, 2013 using a non-state.gov email address. The documents provide voluminous examples of how Abden and others in Clinton's close circle utilized the State Department to provide special treatment and favors for deep-pocketed donors who supported the Clinton Foundation through hefty gifts. How that detail, that Hillary Clinton and her confidants were open to accepting cash for favors, made it through the redaction process is anyone's guess. But it sure doesn't look good for Clinton. Some of those favors included obtaining visas for specific people to enter the country who otherwise wouldn't have been able to, paying extra special attention to major corporate donors to ensure they stayed satisfied, and even some donors seeking appointments to certain ambassadorships in cushy and luxurious posts around the world.
The emails also showed that official government information, some of which was classified, flowed freely between the State Department and top officers at the Clinton Foundation, and revealed that Hayden sought advice on governmental foreign affairs from people outside the government, specifically her mother, Sayla Abn, a controversial Islamist activist believed to be affiliated with the Muslim Brotherhood. Many sensitive documents were also discovered in the batch just released, such as detailed daily schedules for Clinton and others that had been forwarded to the non-governmental accounts of Aben and others. Perhaps unsurprisingly, there were also at least six official business-related email chains found in the batch belonging to Clinton that had not been turned over to the State Department as Clinton had claimed bringing the running total to 439 such emails that should have been turned over but weren't. All told, the emails published by Judicial Watch reveal once again that Hillary Clinton was and continues to be a liar of the first degree, as she didn't turn over everything as claimed and was indeed engaged in a pay-to-play scheme involving donors to her foundation and favors or preferential treatment dispensed by the government. I'm not sure how much more evidence of pay-for-play classified information mishandling, and influence peddling from Clinton's email server one would need to show a serious criminal investigation is required, Tom Fitton, president of Judicial Watch, said in a statement. Stay tuned folks, because there is likely more to come in this ongoing saga of corruption and cronyism at the highest levels of the Obama administration and the Clinton crime family. Please share this on Facebook and Twitter to let everyone know that more Huma Aiden emails were just released, and they reveal more of everyone already suspected. What do you think of the release of more emails incriminating Huma Aiden and Hillary Clinton? Scroll down to comment below.